Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group meeting. It's the 22nd of October. Let's look at the agenda and work through it. So items that I've got on the agenda include, we'll review open action items, talk, read, we'll talk about adopt open JDK for Docker on Debian, Propose a retirement plan for Debian 9. Uh, we had an open question about asking if we should switch the default image from JDK 8 to JDK 11. Our PC 64 little Indian agent access, Windows Server 1909 agent support, Oracle Cloud and Docker platform support, Jet Draft. Uh, any other topics that we need to add to the agenda? Okay, then let's go ahead. So open action items. I still have the open the action to open a JEP for Docker operating system support. Last week, I ran an evaluation uh, script to compare uh, our Docker configurations between various repositories. Uh, looking for inconsistencies, how things are named, etc. The comparisons were between the, the Jenkins core, Jenkins uh, agent, Jenkins Docker agent, or Jenkins inbound agent, and Jenkins uh, SSH agent images, and found some inconsistencies, was gr grateful to see that there were fewer inconsistencies than I expected. I'm going to use that data to uh, frame the principles and the uh, rules that we'll use in the platform plan. Uh, I'm still behind on getting that actually drafted. It will be out as out, I hope, within the next few days. And my intent is that I'll initially draft it without submitting it as a pull request so that we can make corrections and comments as a platform SIG before it ever gets in as a pull request. Uh, I'm open to otherwise though, we could use a pull request to evaluate it as well. All right, so Alex isn't with us today, so we'll skip over his report on CentOS options for adopt OpenJDK and the install plugins. I've still got the action to prepare a blog post on plugin installation manager. That's that's a good thing because we've had fewer than fewer blog posts lately than we want than typical. So mark to do. And we had one item from Jim Crowley of IBM on submitting ref refinements for further parallelization. He had asked some questions recently on the uh, on the, the Docker image generation process. And that I think that indicates that he's making progress there. Any questions or comments on the open action items? Okay, let's talk adopt open JDK 8. So a pull request is submitted that restructures the, the contents of the Docker repository. And I had thought that that had been intended to use open adopt open JDK for the base for the base images. But when I run from the Jenkins slash Jenkins 2.249.2 uh, Docker image, it's still using OpenJDK rather than adopt OpenJDK. Now those images are based that I tested are based on Debian and they are Debian 9 based. So they are slated to be retired or rather what we would say is they'll be upgraded to Debian, upgraded to Debian 10 um, within the next few months as Debian 9 is reaching its end of life. Okay. 
So we'll need we'll need a further conversation with Alex. I thought it was going to use adopt, but as far as I can tell, it is not. So I'll have to check to see if if the new versions based on Debian 10 are using it. Next topic then, retirement plan for Debian stretch nine in the Docker images. And there will be, sorry, Gareth, I just realized I may not have started the recording. Oh no, I am, we are recording, good, sorry. Okay, so switching the retirement plan for Debian nine, uh, that'll just be part of the platform plan, the Docker platform plan, Jeff because Debian 9 is an obvious way to test the rules, test the proposals for the guidelines to say, hey, would that have caused us to drop this naturally anyway? Default image switch from JDK 8 to JDK 11. I propose to defer this one. Uh, JDK 8 has a very long life ahead of itself. And I don't see much motivation for us to switch to JDK 11. Uh, has issues in WebSocket connected agents that I'd like to avoid for our users by default. Uh, next topic, PowerPC 64, Little Endian agent access. We had access from uh, personal machines, but unreliable from ci.jenkins.io. Didn't understand why, and Rafael uh, Sena of IBM found that jumbo packets were enabled uh, at their, on their side and thinks that that may have been the cause of, of network communication problems. Uh, a new machine is being provisioned and we will connect it to our various infrastructure when it's, when it's available. Any questions on PowerPC 64? Next topic, Windows Server. Uh, Gareth, you wanna take us there and share with us what, what we've learned so far? I'm actually gonna mute myself so that my clattering keyboard is cool. Um, yeah, so I suppose that there is a bit of an ongoing question about whether this is um, Windows Server 1909 support or whether we want to change it to be uh, Windows Server 2019 LTSC support. Um, one of the things we've found is uh, building Docker images on Windows is it's very strict about the version of the kernel that you have. Um, in older versions of Windows, it's, it's extremely strict. That um, strictness has loosened slightly in 2019 and onwards, but it would it's still we wouldn't be able to build an 1809 image on a 1909 server, um, for instance, which means that every six months, we're going to be sort of version chasing, um, creating new uh, VMs to be able to handle the builds of these images. So it's a, I'll just let Mark catch up slightly. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an ongoing, it's gonna be an ongoing task. And the question is, what do we actually want to support? Um, I think the recommendation or that I'm proposing, and I think Mark agrees, is that we we go with the LTSC versions of Windows and try and support those. And where possible, we can still keep building these on a regular basis so that we get patch upgrades. But uh, 1909, or sorry, 2019 LTSC is supported until um, 2024, I think. If, if that's the case that we want to go with that LTSC 2019 version, then I'm currently doing some testing to see if I can build an 1809 Docker image on top of a LTSC 2019 
host um, because in theory they are the same kernel version or very very close to the same kernel version um, but we know that there is no at the moment there is no adopt open jdk image for 2019 ltsc um, but there is an open pull request that mark as the um, alex sorry has pushed up for that ah, okay so pull request for ltsc 2019 support yeah, so it's, he's pushed. He's pushed that for LTSC 2019, 1909, and I think one of the nano servers. But it, it's. I think it's going to be the LTSC 2019 that we need. Excellent. Okay. So this was, and this was an adopt Open JDK pull request. Yes. Correct. Great. Okay. Yeah. So Gareth, you described what what I was. I think is the right approach. I think we should stop using, so stop supporting uh, the semi-annual, uh, what do they call them? SAIC, in increment, or actually semi-annual releases like 1809, 1909, 20H2. It's 2004 and then 20H2, yeah. Right. Well, and of course there was a 1903 in there and there was an 1803. So, yeah. and, but I think rolling our, our, our generating equipment every six months is, is more work than we want and more work than our consumers want. Uh, so, and then, but then use uh, LTSC 2019 as our base, regularly patch it regularly run Windows update, etc. So, so, but with the with the end of life of 1809 being in November, uh, I think that makes good sense at all sorts of reasons. So, yeah, 20, 2019 LTSC is based on 1809. It's the same oh. kernel version, so it should. And if we switch anything that we produce should be compatible with what consumers are already running. Oh, good, all right. Switch to LTSC 2019. Also has the best chance of compatibility. That's good, okay. Excellent, thank you. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to factor that into the platform plan, Jeff, Jeff as well try to include the rules as you've described them, Gareth, so that so that people are aware, hey, this is the plan, 1809 is ending life, Debian 9 is ending life, and we will, we will switch at this point to LTSC 2019 rather than switching to 1909 or 20H2. Great. Any other, any other insights you wanna offer there or any other guidance to us? No, I think that's it. All right. Okay, let's see. Next topic then was Oracle Cloud. And uh, I've been in discussion with Oracle. I've actually signed a confidential disclosure agreement with them so that they can share things with us, with me as needed. Um, and I'll be doing some experiments to run Jenkins in Oracle Cloud uh, here within the next few days. Uh, what we hope is that they will be willing to offer uh, additional compute power and uh, network bandwidth to the Jenkins project and uh, help us offset the cost of compute power and network bandwidth that we currently pay to Azure and that we're currently receiving donations for from, uh, from AWS. Oh, oh, and one other, actually, I should add it here, Azure credit offer request. So we've submitted a request to Microsoft Azure asking that they donate uh, resources to Jenkins. Uh, we are hopeful that we'll know within a few weeks by next, next meeting
and uh, I'll certainly let you know what the word is. If they say no, that's okay. It's no worse than we have now, but we would love to have a donation from Microsoft as well, if they're willing. Any questions there? Okay. Docker platform support, uh, the JEP draft, the framework I've got there is uh, I've got some some basic principles that I'm operating with, and then we'll craft rules to apply those principles, and then we'll use the test cases of current current state and what the transition is to the next state based on those principles and rules. So the one of the principles was that uh, we we want to use current currently maintained operating systems only. I know that may sound shocking or surprising. No, it, it makes sense that we don't want to use operating systems that vendors aren't supporting. Currently maintained JDKs. Uh, and we uh, what one of my principles is we want a maintainer assigned for each distribution, for each image that we deliver so that we know that there's someone who will um, care for and worry about that. As an example, right now we have CentOS 7 images that I don't think any of the maintainers actively use a CentOS 7 image. Um, and we, if we don't actively use the image, there is every risk that we will fail to de detect problems in it, that we will not get the results we want, and that users will also not uh, not have it, but this is a different concept than we have right now, where right now what we have is a repository level maintainer, uh, not an image level maintainer. Uh, but the Docker image actually has the concept of a maintainer in the image, and I'm, I'm going to bring the proposal that we consider putting the names of people in those maintainer image maintainer lists so that we know who's, who's aware of that image and caring for it. Now, Gareth, in your experience with Jenkins X or with the Kubernetes project, are there any principles I should be aware of here of things that they've done that you saw you felt like worked quite well? In, in terms of the base um, Docker platform that we supported. Right. Um, we tried to make the images as small as possible. Um, that's it's not always easy. So um, Jenkins X one and two had a, um, it, it used this kind of builder process, which basically requires an operating system and bundles everything into the image. So the images, if you wanted to have a Java builder, you required Maven and probably multiple versions of Java and whatever else. Um, it, it, it was, it's quite frequent that the builders would get to around about four gig in size. That is a significant cost if you're of on bandwidth when you're allowing people to download those. With Jenkins X3, it's using Tekton. So every build step essentially runs in a different container or can run in a different container, which means you can base images off scratch um, and or some of the um, smaller lightweight things. So it wasn't uh, wasn't as required. So wherever possible, we were trying to base things off, yeah, the base scratch image or, or, or something like Alpine Slim or something as small as possible. Um, there are times when that's not doable. But. That's okay. That's a good idea, and I, that's an area where I'm not not expert at all. So we will probably beg for your help to assist us as we review those changes to the Docker image image contents. That's good. Yeah. We also hosted all of our images inside um, GCR rather than Docker Hub um, because it offered image scanning by, by kind of default. And it, it was free, although I think in about a week's time, it's becoming paid for, or it's, there's, there's different tiers of um, paying for it. I think it goes up soon. Um, and, and the image scanning, that's security scanning, looking for outdated outdated packages or packages that have 
no yeah. CDEs. Yes, yeah. So G GCR supports that out of the box. Um, but then you do pay, even though it should be globally distributed, you do pay quite a bit for bandwidth for people to download these images. So making those images as small as possible is um, quite beneficial. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Any any other guidance you want to suggest there based on things that we should consider that I, I wasn't aware of the, the benefit, the strong benefits of multi container images. Thanks. I, and I also know there's there's a there has been a bit of a push recently to go from go towards arm based images as well, or I don't know whether it's supporting them both or providing two different images. Um, I know there is a Jenkins X initiative that's happening. Well, and, um, and certainly that fits with our platform needs. We've got we've got ARM AMD sixty four, and we intend to do. We've already got S three ninety X, and we intend to do PowerPC sixty four LE. So being multi platform is is a good thing for us. Good. Excellent. All right, that covers all the topics we have for today. I think we can conclude our session. Gareth, thanks very much for being here. Recording will be hosted in, will be available in about an hour. Thanks.